Welcome back to Expat Jack. Today we'll take a look at the GoPro Hero 9 Media Mod and try and answer the question, is it worth it? I'll also introduce you to my Alaskan Malamute Apollo. Stay tuned. Before we get started testing the supposedly enhanced directional microphone on the media mod for the Hero 9, uh, one of the main reasons I bought the media mod, let's talk a little bit about microphones. As someone who has decades of experience in the music industry, as a musician who's recorded a lot, who has recorded other people, who's run live sound, I've probably more experienced than your average YouTuber with microphones and I'm a little more discerning about audio quality. That being said, am I looking for a studio condenser mic quality out of this GoPro uh, media mod enhanced microphone? No, I'm not. I have a GoPro because it's an action camera. I can put it places I can't put my DSLR. My DSLR is much more expensive and the GoPro is waterproof, environment proof, so it has a completely different purpose. That being said, I'm absolutely trying to close the gap between the audio quality on my recordings with my GoPro and the audio quality from my more professional Shure microphone attachment to my DSLR. The point is to get consistency and audio quality across my videos. So if this helps with that, then that's great. I've been waiting for a windy day to put this thing through the ringer and really see what the difference is between the onboard mics and the enhanced audio quality that comes with the media mod. So today was that day. GoPro says the media mod can handle gusts up to 20 miles per hour with no problems. And today the winds were gusting 10 to 20 miles per hour, so it really was a perfect day to test that threshold and see how the audio quality compared. So I decided to do the quick indoor test as well. While I'm more concerned about enhanced audio outdoors, between adventure sports and things like that, you might be asking yourself whether or not this will suffice instead of an expensive add-on microphone for what you're trying to do indoors. Hopefully this video will answer that question for you. wind is blowing from the north northwest so it's coming right down the pipe in my hometown of Essex Connecticut I'm gonna knock this out real quick just cuz I got my dog in the car Apollo and he wants to go for a walk he's happy we're down here by the river so first things first we're gonna test the GoPro Hero 9 black which has a microphone on the front and the bottom without the media mod just to get a base reading on these conditions see how uh, how it performs and then uh, I'll rotate and check out each direction of the wind against the microphones and see how it sounds before we do the test with the medium on. All right, starting this off, I'm facing to the north, so the wind is coming from behind the camera, right down the river. Wait for a gust here, see if anything happens. There's one coming. May or may not affect the cameras. All right, turning to the west. So the wind is coming from camera left to camera right. A little bit more breeze. There we go. Enjoying some coffee from Essex Coffee and Tea Company. Delicious. Um, all right, back to the wind. So the camera is facing into the wind. You can see over my shoulder there, there is a little bit darker patches on the water. That's where gusts are. All right, there's a little bit of breeze. Hopefully that catches the microphone there to give us an ample test. And last but not least, I am turning 
to the east. So wind is coming from camera right to camera left across the front, across the microphones, slight gust. There we go. See how it affects the audio quality. So that concludes the test without the media mod for the Hero 9 Black, just as is. So the media mod itself comes with this little windscreen that I'm going to actually do the test with it on. Uh, out here I won't do the test with it off because it's kind of the whole point is to protect from the wind right and the elements. So we'll see how this works. Alright, so with a little practice, it's not too bad to mount, but it's still kind of annoying. You have to, if it's mounted to anything, you have to take it off. So now that it's attached, let's go ahead and uh, do the test. Just like last time, I'm starting facing the north. So the wind's coming right at me. There's a little gust right here. This is the directional mic with the medium mod attached. We'll see the quality compared to the test without it. Hopefully you can hear what I'm saying more clear because it is a directional microphone, so it should. All right, that wind has passed. I'm gonna go ahead and turn sideways. All right, so now I'm facing the west. The wind is coming from left to right across the camera and the microphone. Hopefully the windscreen is doing its job and uh, the audio is still clear. We'll see momentarily. There is a gust of wind that will be here momentarily. The whole point of this is to keep talking so that way you can hear me clearly whether or not it's working, we shall see some gusts of wind facing to the south. So the wind is behind me, coming straight down the river, right into the face of the camera. So it should be hitting the front of that windscreen, the front of the directional mic, and we'll see how that affects the audio quality of my voice. Hopefully you can still hear me. Mic check, one, two. Some darker spots on the river here coming up. So that means a gust. Give it just a moment. We'll see what happens when this gust hits us. All right, there we go. A little bit more breeze, feeling at my back, right into the front of the microphone. Yeah, today would be a great day for sailing on the river. All right, now I'm facing to the east. A much larger gust is headed my way, so we'll see how this sounds. Coming from right to left across the camera screen and microphone. Here's some breeze, there it is. And we'll see if there's any difference in audio quality on the video. Let's see, there's the wind. Boom, gust complete. Okay, so that's a basic test of the Hero 9 Black Media Mod. And is it worth it? Well, I can't tell you right now. I gotta go back into my studio, download the video onto the computer, listen to it back, and uh, I'll highlight the results later. For now, I gotta walk my dog, cause he's excited we're here. He thinks he's the whole reason we're here, not this, so. <laughs> See you later.
this is the GoPro Hero 9 internal microphone test. This is the control, indoors, no wind, no external factors. You should be able to hear me clearly. Hopefully the media mod will make it sound better. We'll check that here in just one second. So now here's the indoor test with the GoPro Hero 9 media mod attached. Hopefully the mic quality is better, directional microphone pointed at me, and we'll see how this compares without one more time. Again, this is the Hero 9 internal microphones. We're comparing this to the media mod available for it. This is just the standard GoPro audio that you would get. We'll try the media mod audio one more time to check the sound quality. It should be better. And one last time, this is an indoor test with the media mod attached to the GoPro Hero 9. It should sound better. There's no wind, no external factors affecting the audio quality. It should just be clear audio with the enhanced microphone. Verdict on mic quality. Is it better? I have to say I was really impressed with how much better the audio quality was with the media mod than without. In fact, it even surprised me that it was better than the professional directional mic made by Shure on my DSLR. Now granted, I was standing much farther away from my DSLR on the dock than I was to the GoPro. And there are also some settings on the Shure microphone that I didn't bother to mess with that probably would have helped cut down on wind noise. But all in all, it was a great test and it really proved that it was a worthwhile investment for me. As far as the indoor test, with the outdoor test being so obvious, I wasn't surprised at all that the audio quality on the indoor test was also better. So if you're looking to enhance the quality of your audio recordings, the media mod is definitely a possibility. So let's go through some pros and cons real quick. Pro, upon startup, the GoPro instantly recognizes the fact that it is attached to the media mod and there's nothing else you have to do. Also, you have these cold shoe mounts, right? So these are these attachments here on the top and on the side that you can use to connect other external things like lights, external microphones. There are a ton of non GoPro brand accessories that will work with this because it is a photography specific mount. Also on the back you have an HDMI out which is nice to connect to a TV so anything you record you can immediately show family and friends and share those memories. I haven't messed with it yet so I don't know, for me it doesn't really matter, but it, it, I can't see it as a benefit. Let's move on to the cons real quick. Number one, if the GoPro is mounted to anything, you have to unmount it before you can remove it from the media mod because it uses the GoPro's mounts from underneath. Let me demonstrate. I can go ahead and open the media mod and try and pull the GoPro camera out, but it does not work because it is using the GoPro mounts underneath. So if I want to take this off, I have to unscrew it, which brings me to the next point. This is a pain in the butt. It's so close to the camera that it's really hard to unscrew. So yeah, this could definitely have been much better designed if the media mod itself had its own mounting system so you could just pull the GoPro out if you needed to do something else with it real quick. As far as the microphone is concerned, you can see here without the windscreen that you have a forward facing microphone but it also has a small rear facing microphone. If you want to choose between them, you cannot switch while you're recording. You have to stop the recording, you have to go into the settings and choose whether you're going to use the front microphone or the back microphone. It would have been really nice if you could switch on the fly or even better if it would record both microphones in stereo. Maybe they can do that in the future but for right now you're stuck with one or the other until you stop the video and change it. Another con is it is not waterproof. It's weather resistant, which is great, but not waterproof. So you can't take it in any water sports. You can't leave it out in the rain if you're doing time lapse or anything like that. It's kind of to be expected, but you know, what can you do? Lastly, I have something that is a pro and a con. So if you want to hook up the GoPro to an external power source to 
provide power for longer than what a GoPro battery can provide, multiple hour long time lapses, things like that. You can do that with and without the media mod. Something to note here though, if you do that, the battery cannot be installed while you're running external power. Now, without the media mod, you have the USB-C connector right here. And as you can see, without a battery, that leaves the internal components of the camera open to the elements, including the SD card. Now, what's nice about the media mod is it provides more protection from the elements when you are hooked up to external power. It's sealed all the way around, and on the back you have a little flap that opens up. There's the USB-C port for connecting to external power. So here's the annoying part. You cannot use external power with a battery in. Well, I should rephrase that. You can, but you won't get ideal results. This is why. With a battery installed and connected to external power, right, the camera will use the battery. It'll turn on like normal. It, you'll think it's, oh, it's connected to external power. It's going to work just fine. You'll start your time lapse that you're expecting to run overnight. You want to capture the Milky Way or something like that. And what will happen is you'll go to bed and the GoPro will drain the battery down to nothing, use the battery power to capture the footage. It'll shut itself off when the battery dies. And then it'll say, oh, I'm connected to power. I must be trying to charge and it'll charge the battery. So you'll come back the next morning. You'll have a full battery, which great, but you will have significant less footage than you were expecting. And you'll have to reshoot again the next night. If you can even recapture whatever the shot is you were trying to record in the first place. Now, why does this happen? It happens with or without the media mod. It's just to prevent overheating, basically. As the battery's charging, the battery heats up, and when you're using the GoPro, it heats up. So this is just really a fail safe to make sure nothing goes wrong with the battery and the camera overheating and damaging the components. It's kind of annoying because nobody tells you this until it happens to you. As you can tell, it happened to me, so here I am just trying to save you the trouble. If you're gonna connect it to external power, do not keep the battery installed. You'll be severely disappointed. Final thoughts. So all in all, just having a slightly upgraded mic with windshielding capability, if I wanna add in a quick talking point to the camera, if I'm on the chairlift, on the slopes, out at the beach, and not having to lug around larger external equipment is a really nice feature. And the ability to plug it into external power without leaving the internal components open to the elements is great. I don't wanna buy another camera because I ruined mine. Lastly, the cold shoe mounts are kinda of cool. I have options to add on components that are not GoPro brand that might do a better job or might be a little bit cheaper. So that's definitely a plus as well. Let me know what you think in the comments. If it's worked for you, if it hasn't, and as I use it more, I'll make sure to update in the future. If you like this video and found it informative, or even if you just like my dog Apollo, please click like. If you want more content like this in the future, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.